The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode we're going to build a game man. Walk boy? Let's call it a DMG player. Now let's play with power. Portable power. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So here's the problem. There are two PCBs in the classic Game Boy. And when you try to repair a Game Boy, most often the display is broken and you only end up with a working main board. The main board has the cartridge connector and the DMG CPU on it. There are two 64K bit or 8K byte SRAM chips on the board. One is for video and one is for game data that's dynamically used. The main board is only half the size of the game board, unlike the buttons and display board. Connected to the main board is also a boost bar converter made by Alps and the headphone socket PCB. Isn't it a shame to have this wonderful and powerful board collect dust in a drawer? So I was wondering, what can I actually do with a board like this? When it comes to FPGAs, I'm not as versed as one of our hosts, Andy. So I was focusing on something that wouldn't necessarily need a display, and that is sound. There's a big community around the sound of the Game Boy. We have LSDJ and Nanoloop, for example, that are excellent tools to create music on the Game Boy. Some people even have extracted and shared original game music. These files are called GBS files. They are tricky to navigate in emulators though and I don't think they are fitting for this kind of video. So I tried to make a sequencer myself. I used the one and only timer of the Game Boy and set it to a frequency of 65,536 Hertz. The Game Boy timer counts from a number that you set in the TMA register and counts up to 255. So the higher you set the value, the more frequently the interrupt function will be called. It took me a while to make use of all the four voice channels that you have on the Game Boy. Once I found out how to set the waveform of the third voice, I was then able to make a sequencer for every four voices. To program the code that is running on the Game Boy cartridge, I basically need three things. The Game Boy Development Kit or GBDK is a set of tools that allows to compile C code and assembler code into a Game Boy hex file. To test these files, I will not burn the EEPROM on the cartridge every time, but use an emulator like NGBA instead. To finally flash the cartridge, I will use my not so trusty DIY Game Boy Cartridge Reader Flasher Writer. The whole project is set up like this. At first we wanna connect the LiPo battery with a charger to the Game Boy. We then connect a custom buttons board to the Game Boy. The Game Boy will then be connected to an Arduino over the serial link port. Finally we will add the display to the Arduino. If everything checks out I'm gonna make a PCB out of the three parts that we've added. Here's the pinout of the connector that connects the main board with the display board. The orange ones are the ones I will use for my project. I will start to solder on the button keyboard matrix that I've made and then we'll check with an original Game Boy display and the favorite game of everyone if the button matrix works. To work on the prototype I also need a Game Boy Link cable that I can connect to my Arduino. So what I just verified is the code by Enic UAV Lab. I was able to write the code on my cartridge. They run custom code on a cartridge and have the Game Boy connected over the serial link port of the Game Boy to an Arduino. And then it gets a bit more complicated but in the end they are able to control a UAV, a drone with a Game Boy. So that's pretty cool. And this is what I want to use to make the display show information we send from the cartridge from the Game Boy to the Arduino and the Arduino then shows it on the display. When I started this project I didn't think of using a display but 
I was browsing on funnel.com and was stumbling over a display that I thought really fit well. I was hoping that there might be an Arduino library for that display. When I was looking for the display name, I didn't find anything. But when I used the chip name, I was stumbling over the UAG2 library. Sadly, they didn't use the same protocol, so yeah. I really had to write my own code to make the display work. Fun fact about the display, it is actually two displays in one and the whole resolution of it is 122 pixels by 32 pixels. So we have a working Arduino board here. Nice. I might have managed to finally burn the program on the cartridge. And it and this time it even says here bleep track. So let me hit start. So I managed to make the LCD work and show the letters on the display when I push a button. There's some garbage in there and it's cut off on the second display, but we're getting somewhere. I'm really pleased about how my first video was received. Um, there was even someone on the Element 14 community who has built a skeleton handheld himself. That made everyone's day at Element 14 and it made my day as well. Many of you have told me that I should put my skeleton handheld into resin and that's exactly what I did. If you want to see the full process, I have shared it on youtube.com slash davedarko. I can't say that it made my life easier, but the result speaks for itself and I'm really happy about the outcome. So thank you everyone and now let's get back to work. All right, so sometimes you only see things when you actually try to put them together. And so far I'm uh, amazed that nothing else happened. I just had to remove the JST connector for the battery because this capacitor was uh, in the way. Let's put everything together and see if it works like it's intended. I'm going to grab some original Game Boy tri-wing screws to make the experience whole. Basically it goes into this sandwich like that. This is looking very nice. Um, I'm just going to upload the Arduino code so that the display works again. Um, I uploaded the test thing earlier. I have to turn it on to program it. Done uploading, okay. As you can see, um, it is connected to USB and the charge light is glowing. Let's turn it on. Oh, 
That's everything we got for today. There are still some improvements that I can and should do, but I think it's quite okay to show you where I'm at. The Game Boy turned 30 years this year and I'm still amazed of what you can do with this console. Have you ever thought about how to use vintage parts in a new project? What would you do with the Game Boy mainboard? And on a personal note, I want to know what's your favorite Game Boy case color? You can choose from any Game Boy generation. Can you guess what's mine? Tell us everything at the Element 14 community. You can find me there and the schematics and 3D files and code and anything else on that platform as well. So if there's nothing left to say, I will say Auf Wiedersehen and have a nice one. Bye.